I'm here today to give you the most helpful and foolproof tips for how to art direct and style your own items. Well, howdy. My name is Diana Chu here at Slow Gaze. Welcome to my bedroom. I work as an artist, a graphic designer, and an art director outside of this YouTube space. So I've been in the industry uh, for a while now. I've seen the back end of photo shoots. I've been a prop stylist for a bunch of them. I'm also deeply involved in apparel, shooting things for email, shooting lookbooks, shooting things on models. Like that is kind of my bread and butter. Being an art director, it seems like a nebulous idea. Um, if you've watched Mad Men, you can see that there's the creative director, which is the Don Draper character. He has a bunch of copywriters, art directors, and people who help concept things. They're usually in charge of the art. So back then in the 50s, it would be deciding what is photographed, how it's photographed, what the image is. So they would either create the image through an illustration, compile and collage things, the direction of the art, so to speak. Nowadays, it can mean a lot more things. You can be an art director for video content, social content, experiential stuff, basically any kind of application you can need an art director to help visualize, conceptualize the way it's gonna look, the mood it's gonna set, and what is going to show up. All that aside, I am not a photographer, I am not a fashion stylist, I'm not a niche expert. I'm just using my iPhone 7 uh, from many years ago to photograph and video all of my tips here. So you don't need fancy equipment. I do have a ring light, but I'll talk about that in a second. I'm gonna go through four different styles of items and how I like to prep the items. If you're ready to go on this journey with me, welcome, welcome, hop aboard and see you on the flip side. 30 years old, I just started on Depop maybe a few weeks ago and I wanted to share what I've learned. There's already been maybe six sales on my Depop shop. I had maybe 10 to 15 items on there, shoes, bags, things that I have loved but think that they deserve a better home and a different life. Today I plan on walking you through how I prep a t-shirt, filming a small accessory like a small clutch bag, a larger accessory like a backpack, and a pair of shoes. So if you're interested in that, please keep watching. This is just how I do it and it's been working for me so far. So I've been looking for Depop advice on YouTube and a lot of the popular videos out there are from <laughs> a different generation. I'm an aging millennial, but I'm really just trying to not even cut my losses or break even. I'm trying to sustainably have my clothes and my accessories have a different life without them being donated, which can be a wonderful way to support your local charities or thrift stores or consignment stores. But the reality is if we're to d dump bags and bags of things at Goodwill, most of it ends up in a landfill, whether or not we like to face that reality. So let's dive into a t-shirt. Firstly, let's look at the garment itself. It is quite wrinkled. So I have set up my little travel iron. It is nothing powerful. The steamer doesn't even work. Anything that you can get your hands on that heats up is great. Do follow the settings if you're not one to iron much. I know that that is me. Blends, wool, and cotton. So you want things low for blends like polyester and viscose and rayon because otherwise you will literally melt the garment. Wool is just delicate um, and cotton is the most resilient and sometimes it's very hard to get wrinkles out of cotton and linen as well. You'll learn very quickly how much heat and pressure you need. You definitely need to press down. It is not simply about the iron doing all of the work. Used to irons were made out of iron, believe it or not, or at least a very heavy material. So it's the combination of heat and pressure that will help you get the wrinkles out of a stubborn t-shirt like this. This is a linen and cotton blend from Imogene and Willie. So the t-shirt itself was rather expensive. It's a very thick weave. So choose a garment that you know you're happy to get rid of and that people might be interested in. The hanger or the hanging apparatus. I do have other hangers. This one's a bit knocked up. It's a little bit more aesthetic than a black hanger. If I were to hang a black garment, I would also be using this white hanger because it works with my walls. I want it to kind of blend in, but also give a sturdiness. I would not use a wire hanger, anything that makes the item look cheaper. I'm also into this hanger because the top swivels. 
So I can always hang it on a doorknob and photograph it this way. But using my Ikea mirror here, I've swiveled the head and I can also hang it this way and capture it in a different angle. Now you might see my giant ring light. I do own a ring light because I make YouTube videos require studio lighting. I can link this one down below. It is by Mount Dog. Bought it off Amazon for about a hundred bucks. And I really love this. You can change out the color of this so it doesn't have to be so cool toned. It comes with a warm tone, comes with a little remote that works for my camera. And this also can hold your phone or your apparatus sideways or it tips over to allow you to do it vertical as well. It has changed the game. Hello, I am kneeling on the ground <laughs> next to the setup that I have decided upon for this t-shirt. Giant Ikea mirror Depop does take only square images and video at this time. I wouldn't go into the app yet and photograph. I would start just in my camera on my phone in the square format like you're taking a photo for Instagram. Depop only accepts four images. I think that's really smart. At first I thought it was very prohibitive, but four images makes you really work for those four images. So for a t-shirt, there's not really too much to photograph, front, back, and then maybe the label. If there are any stains or imperfections, that would be my fourth image. For bags and shoes, it's a little bit more tricky because you wanna show the condition of the soles and the insides and the tongue and the laces. All of that I think is really important for a viewer to see how it would look from a top view, like if they were wearing it. So we'll move on to that. But right now, I think I'm pretty happy with this. This is with a little bit of natural light coming in. It might look fine here, but I wanna show you what it looks like when I turn my very bright light on. Obviously, I'm gonna be blown out because I'm in the foreground. Coloring will start to look more even with the light on. It's gonna lo look a lot less yellow, especially for a white t-shirt, that's very important. This is also an off-white t-shirt, so it's important to have maybe other colors that are neutral or white kind of to offset it so it doesn't just look blank, dirty, or sad. So I'm going to adjust the lighting a little bit, then start taking photos of this. That's the highest the light will go. It looks a bit strong. Bunch of shadows cast behind there, and that's quite a good look but I want it a little bit softer. I don't want it to look too high street or too edgy. The mirror has now been tweaked so that the back is showing more. At first, I just thought I wanted the side profile. I'm liking how the shots are working. The back of the mirror is so architectural that I don't think people or viewers would be distracted from it. I'm also liking how this t-shirt is hiding my sockets and I'm not getting these two very distracting visuals in the frame. Sure, it's a little wrinkled, but I am always checking to see that everything is kind of lined up. I'm watching for the silhouette. I'm watching for any strange things that are happening. So if I'm looking at the t-shirt here, the first thing my eyes go to, of course, is Nashville, but it might also be this really strong wrinkle right here, or the way that the sleeve is hitting right there. There's a lot of visual interest and contrast. So I would try to massage it. And there, that kind of removes some of it. I see the strong line here, so I might massage it again. And it's a little less strong. I would try to make these sleeves look a little bit more alive. <laughs> and then this, I either try to tug it a little bit so the front is covering the back. And there, that helps it a lot. It takes a lot of tweaking and massaging and touching but that's what stylists do. If you've ever seen a J. Crew email or something with a beautiful stack of cardigans, they're not perfectly perfect. Everything has been touched and zhuzhed and moved just so that they look like they're not just dead objects. They actually have a little bit of motion, but not too much motion. So this is kind of your role right now. It's your prop styling debut. So I encourage you to really take charge of the garment. Keep working it until it feels right. It'll take quite a bit. I know that you can get there. So this is the setup as it looks like with my iron moved out of the way and my ring light facing it. There's not too much depth between them. I don't have an overhead light shining on it, so there's no extra lighting that's coming in and confusing the tones and the colors. Moved to the 
opposite side of my bedroom. So I have another setup here, my dresser drawers and something that won't be shown in the frame, but it's important and I'll talk about it in a second. A small prop, this candle. I try to not use props, but if I have to bring out a little bit of a color, let's say I'm photographing earrings or something that requires me to come in close, it's nice to have a background and a foreground so that people can get a sense of scale and texture. I love this brushed sort of brass tone candle that I have. This is the item that I'm trying to declutter or depop. Genuine Louis Vuitton clutch. I've used it since I guess 2012 and this is just a cork board that I had painted a long time ago back in college as well so the color the paint didn't quite adhere to uh, the finish of the wood here but I love that texture it won't come off and I just kind of whitewashed the rest of this cork board I want something to take a little bit of a textural back seat but to make the item sing so I like this because I can make it a wide angle or I can make it a tall angle. I really enjoy having the dust bag in the last shot that I show for bags so that people know either A, it's authentic, B, it's added value. I tried tipping it on its corner so that it has a little bit more visual interest. Anything that's asymmetrical or something that feels like it's a little bit playful instead of just flat helps draw the eye. First photo is the most important. It has to accurately represent the item. Then I flipped it on its back. I love how the long zipper pull on the back is creating a diagonal, just sitting there flat so people understood what it was. And then that zipper is giving me interest. Next, I chose a paperback or some kind of reference thing for scale. I wanted people to know that this is a clutch, that it actually could hold a lot more than just a book. I want people to also start seeing the interior. For the last shot, I was tempted to put it in its dust bag, but I thought I could get the dust bag in the shot as well as an interior photo because there's so many pockets and lovely little details. I also want people to see the condition that it's in. So I'm holding it off, off camera to the left. It's not the best shot, but it gives people an idea. Oftentimes, if people are interested in a luxury item, they'll ask to see additional photos or you could always shoot a video for Depop. I haven't done that yet, but people might message you and say, hey, this is my Instagram, could you DM me with a few photos? And then it's up to you whether or not you want to oblige. So it's a little bit more work, but if you do the work up front with the first four photos, you should be good to go. You'd be surprised how happy they are with even things with a few scratches or imperfections. Next up is this behemoth of a Louis V bag. I didn't plan for this to be so themed. This is the only Louis Vuitton that I own and both of them I bought from the resale market anyway. This is heavily stained, water stained, and it's seen a lot. I've traveled across the world with this uh, to Amsterdam and Prague before and that was the only bag that I brought for 10 days. Actually, no, that's not true. This was my luggage bag, quote unquote, I'm doing air quotes, but you can't see me. Also had a leather backpack with me, which is actually on my Depop right now. So if you wanted to see it, it's still for sale. My Depop is at the slow gaze, but you can find the link down below as well. I think I bought it for about $200 off of Etsy. It was shipped in from Japan. I think a schoolgirl was trying to sell literally her, um, her wares. And I love a good patina. I love it when things look old and lived in, especially luggage, especially Louis V. I think it just gives the mystique and gives the idea that you've been traveling. There's so much character here. So this guy is going to be stuffed with this thing from my husband. Sweatshirt of his that is going to go in there. Since this is such a vertical item, I made sure to flip the cork board so that it also had some height, making it look a lot more statuesque and a little bit more formal. So I like giving my items a character. It looks kind of stately, cinched the top with the sweatshirt inside so that it would hold some shape. It has some push and pull on the inside to help it just stay the way I want. My next shot shows the width of the bag and also showing the straps that it can be both sling or a backpack style. Showing the interior is really important. And then I wanted to show the condition of the bottom because it is quite scuffed up and quite well loved. I always put in my description price is firm. The first question I get from so many people is, 
can I get $10 for this? Um, it'll cost me $15 to ship. Or they'll ask, how low can you go? It just kind of turns me off. I'm trying to price this as fairly as possible, but I have to remind myself, and this is where we talk about sunk costs. I've already paid for this. The money is long gone. The item that I have is no longer serving me. So I'm not trying to quote unquote break even monetary wise. I'm trying to break even with my mental health, my space, and with the intentional items that I own. That is extremely valuable to me and that's almost a priceless thing. I'm not gonna be a stickler about prices, but I am gonna try to think about it, research what's out there, and then just let it go. Once I set it, I forget it. The last item I have to show you, this pair of Vans. It is not in its original shoebox, but it helps if you can find a shoebox that you would probably be able to part with. I think this is a Clark's Originals shoe box. Protect the shoes that you're sending and also I could use this as a prop. So let's open her up. Prime example of things that I love to buy because I'm so drawn to the colors. I even added some custom shoelaces on here. I just love Vans. Their high top style is a style that I hadn't even tried. All leather. I love it when their checkerboard is made out of leather. I have on Depop right now a pair that's all white, tonal white, suede and cream and leather. Oh my God, I love Vans so much. So already I can tell that the tongues are gonna be a little bit of an issue. So I might stuff these with socks or a thin t-shirt just so that I can get the tongues to stay while I'm styling them. I also want to capture all of the different angles here, so I'm gonna maybe try to be a little bit more playful with it. If I can show two sides at once, that's already gonna save me a photo. Since I'm using the box and the lid as a prop, one of the shoes can also lean on it so I can get a get different angle of the shoe. Very purposeful to make sure that there aren't too many competing angles. I'll show you what it looks like zoomed out. I have that navy blind that's coming in on the left here. I have, of course, the cork board and its frame, the dresser and the shoe boxes. There's so many competing angles. It clutters up the frame and I want the shoes to be front and center. So I try to angle my body, move down low. Um, I'm not standing straight up. I'm actually crouching. So I can try not to take a photo of the shoes in a very distorted way. I'm not getting so close up that the front of the shoe or whatever's closest to the camera looks disproportionately larger than it is. I'm also making sure that I see a bit of the tongue because that pop of yellow is really helping this color story. The following shots I'm not as precious with, with what shows up and what doesn't. I love taking a photo of shoes from above because then the viewer can imagine the shoes on themselves and it would be as if they were looking down. Always with aerial sh shots, I have to be careful that my body isn't blocking too much light. You know, usually we have lights in our house that are coming down from the ceiling. So no matter where I stand, I'm gonna be blocking the light. That said, with the ring light, I can actually get out of the way a little bit, stand sideways so that my body isn't right in front of the ring light and then I can get still a good amount of light on the shoes. Another problem with this is that my feet and my legs usually get into the shot. So I have to either grab a stool or stand on my tippy toes with a wide stance. The last one I wanna show, classic off the wall originals, red tag on the heel, and then the state of the waffle sole. I hope that was helpful for you. Some tips and tricks on how to style your items. If you have any questions about things that maybe are harder to style, especially like things that are longer, like a dress or pants even, I'm happy to do a follow-up to this video. If there's a particular part of a dress or a garment that made you buy it or that makes it special, definitely try to take a photo of that. I think the lighting is probably the most important, the color trueness and how accurately you can capture that on camera is really important. I know that seeing it in broad daylight can seem like a really good idea. So if you have, you know, the setup and the ability and a really good sunny day garments outdoors, that's not a bad way to go. I would just say, watch out for grass stains, watch out for any wind that might kick up that could ruin your shot or any debris that might fly into the shot. I would also avoid high noon uh, where the sun is at its zenith and it's creating just such an intense lighting situation, especially for bright whites or things that could get washed out and then people can't see the texture, the folds of the garment. I don't edit my photos after. You absolutely could, but I wanna try to do as much upfront as possible, give as much accurate representation and then go from there. It's just much faster for me. I don't wanna to put too much effort into my photos. 
So hopefully with these tips and tricks, you can get the closest you want uh, from the get-go. You don't have to have a ring light, any kind of cooling light. Um, just look at the lamps and the chandeliers and the sconces you might have in your home. If they're tinted warmly or if the bulb itself is a warm light, um, sometimes you really might have to go out and get an LED um, natural light or even a cool white light. Lighting is so, so, so key. Next, I would look for imperfections, wrinkles, texture. I really think that people are interested in seeing the sumptuous velvets or figuring out how worn in a cotton tee is. The texture can really tell you a lot. People are so savvy with seeing things online nowadays that they can really tell, oh, that's that looks like an expensive material, even if they don't touch it. That would be my second thing to focus on. Thirdly, of course, the setup and the prop styling, as I called it. It's not just props. You don't have to use any props. You can absolutely just shoot it on white, shoot it on a bedspread. But if you're interested in making it a little more elevated or making your Depop, if you're going to sell a lot of items altogether, making it kind of cohesive like an Instagram feed, I would say pick a chair, a stool, a pile of boxes even, something that you would keep as your designated prop. It's much easier if it's not on the ground because like I said, you have a lot of distortion, you get your feet in the shot, you have to really crouch down. It's helpful if something is standing up a little bit off of the ground. So even if you have a pile of textbooks, cookbooks, a sheet, a tablecloth, something that has a lot of, um, anything linen would work too. I would not recommend a towel um, unless that's your style, like a really colorful beach towel might be fun, but really see how it reacts in the light. Sometimes like a sleeping bag might be a bit too reflective. Like you want something to really set back and either blend in with your walls or just take the overall feeling that you're trying to convey. So you can drape that over your pile of boxes or books and that can make a really nice backdrop as well. I personally don't like trying on so many clothes, so I'm not one to style it on my body and then, you know, just do the glamour stuff. That's just not who I am. Of course, if there's something that has a length to it, that's important. Like if there's a full length dress, that's when I would say, okay, it's important. Like a cropped vest, something that hits you just right and you have to show people why it's such a special piece because items like sweaters, uh, vests or dresses, pants too, those can be really tricky to show how cute they are on a hanger or just laying down flat. Finally, do you need an iron? Don't always use the iron, but it really helps sell things that have been maybe squashed in a storage bag for a long time. My last recommendation is to put all of the photos that you've taken of an item even if it takes you 50 tries to take four photos for Depop, that's okay. Put them all in an album so that you can just scroll through and say, wow, this one's the hero and delete all the ones that maybe are looking a little funny from far away. And if you're interested, just research what already is out there. If I type in Vans high tops, and if I find ones that I'm more drawn to, I might try to mimic what they're doing. That's it for me. I'm not sure I covered it all, but I tried to give my most helpful tips. If you liked this video or if you thought it was helpful in any way, please give it a thumbs up. That's the best uh, compliment you could give me. Otherwise, I make a lot of content about slowing down, looking at your own collection, and loving what you already own or giving it a new life um, here at Slow Gaze. So my tag is slowing down and turning the gaze inwards. I make a lot of beauty content. I'm moving into more lifestyle stuff, document my stuff, document how I'm getting rid of my clutter and figuring out uh, what a minimalist or essentialist lifestyle is for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. It would really help my little channel grow. Also leave me a comment. I love to see your tips and tricks um, on Depop or Mercari or eBay, whatever you're using to sell your items. Uh, share your tips below. I think people are always interested to see the back end of things. It can seem very daunting if you just download Depop and decide, yes, I'm going to start selling all of my stuff. It can be very like, oh shoot, do I have to be cool? Do I have to have color backdrops? Do I have to have it all styled with cool sunglasses? I really wanted to make this as easy and foolproof as possible. So I will see you on the next video. Request anything that you'd like to see further down below and yeah, have a great morning, evening, night, wherever you are. Um, adios, till next time.
please handle this side up. You got me upside down.